Um, well, welcome back for another fantastic episode of The Nonprofit Show. I have the privilege today, I'm Wendy Adams, one of the co-hosts of the show, and I have the privilege of sharing the stage with a soulful, yes, uh, <laughs> guest today, Robin Witsack from Souls for Souls, and an illustrious co-host, Tony Bell. We won't okay. tell you what he actually said for us to remember his last name. That's okay. <laughs> uh, but yes, we're going to have some fun today and we're going to leave inspired. So let's get ready to jump in for that as, as we kick it off. Yeah. So absolutely, absolutely. So Robin's going to share a little bit about her um, and, and her why, and then we'll jump into the organization and what we can learn from them especially in that area of volunteerism and corporate engagement. So exciting time for all of us, right? That being said, let's jump into the, um, the where we are as far as Tony and I and the, the opportunity that we have as um, an illustrious co-host panel. So you've seen some of us and been able to meet some of us, Julia C. Patrick, um, Mitch Stein, uh, Miko Marquette Whitlock, of course myself, Tony is uh, Tony um, Bell is on today. Sherry Kwam Taylor and Meredith Tarian. I think at this point you've had the opportunity to spend some time with each of us, and that will continue to happen. So excited to be a part of, and it is a blessing as well. Sure. All right. Well, there would not be any of what we're doing if it wasn't for. So Tony, tell us. Yes, yeah, so we are so grateful for these presenting sponsors. And one of the things I love to say about these sponsors is not only are we grateful for their support of the nonprofit show, but we're really grateful for their, for their support of professional development in the nonprofit space. So, uh, so professional development, professional learning is important in any career. Certainly, it's important in fundraising and philanthropy. And we really celebrate these sponsors for helping us do that every day here on the nonprofit show. So thank you to Bloomerang, the American Nonprofit Academy, the nonprofit show, nonprofit thought leader, the Fundraising Academy at National University, 180 Management Group, your part-time controller, the nonprofit accounting specialist, Staffing Boutique, JMT Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. So much gratitude to all of them for sponsoring the nonprofit show. And some of them have been around since the beginning. So Absolutely. that says, yeah, that says a lot. Thank you for that. Again, we know that we're all a part of that, that illustrious panel. So we want to hear today from Robin Witzak from Souls for Souls. Why? Who? What? Tell us, Robin. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. Um, as Wendy said, I'm Robin Witzak. I'm the VP of Business Development and Strategic Partnerships at Souls for Souls. I've been here about two years. Um, my why since I graduated college and went to the Peace Corps has always been about making a difference. Um, so before joining Souls for Souls, I spent almost nine years at the National Retail Federation Foundation, where I got to work with different retailers, really promoting talent acquisition and encouraging students to um, find their passion in the retail industry. And when this opportunity came at Souls for Souls, I was able to take that drive to make a difference in my relationships with the retailers to a new level um, and continue to work with them on relationship building, partnerships, employee engagement, all the exciting things we're going to talk about today. So for me, my why has always been about making a difference, um, leaving the world a better place. Um, so excited to share more about what we do at Souls for Souls with you all. Wow, wow, wow. I think we can all just get excited about just the little snippets that you've given us and that experience that you've had, especially when we start talking about volunteerism and how that really pulls us all together. When we think about our sector, that really is us at our core, right? We talk about time, talent, and then the treasure. So excited to see how we're going to, how you're going to step that out for us and really flesh out what that means and what that looks like. So let's keep rolling. I am so, there we go. <laughs> so the mission of Souls to Souls, we you know we start in that space of why, what, how, what does that mean? And so you've given us a snippet about you. How does that translate into the work that you are doing and your team is doing at Souls for Souls? 
Yeah. So at Souls for Souls, we take unwanted shoes, clothes, and accessories, and we turn them into opportunity uh, by keeping them from going to waste and really putting mm. them to good use. And we do that through providing relief, creating jobs, and really empowering people to break the cycle of poverty. Uh, we have three main programs that we work on, and you'll see um, a, a trend here with our fours. So we have four, the number four relief, four opportunity, and four every kid. Um, and with four relief, we're you know helping to get new shoes. Always, it's always new, uh, new shoes and clothes on the feet of people in crisis. That could be um, after a disaster, man-made or natural, or it could just be mm. um, people who are facing economic hardship um, and really freeing up financial resources for them to put towards other things. And then with For Opportunity, we're selling and distributing shoes uh, through our international partners to help people start new businesses around the world. And then our newest program is called For Every Kid, and it really hits home for so many people um, because it's providing new athletic shoes to kids who are experiencing homelessness across the U.S., and that's upwards of a million who are identified every year. So it's a big um, project and and program that we're really leaning into to do annually. And then cutting across all of these programs really is our for the planet mission. And so trying to think mm. about how can we help people extend the life of what they have and not to prematurely discard um, what what really has opportunity for um, a longer life. In a nutshell, that's what we do. <laughs> and and that's those are all all really exciting, Robin. And but the environmental impact. So we we you know when we we we'll, and we'll talk about shoot drives and ways for employees to become engaged in souls for souls. Uh, and that just seems so obvious, but folks don't really recognize until you speak to it so clearly the environmental impact uh, that Souls for Souls has with, you know, with its mission and, and the way in which you, you're supporting communities and uh, across the globe. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And there's always there's always opportunity. We talk a lot about, um, you know, kids shoes and how qu uh, quickly mm -hmm. kids grow out of them and People ask, like, do you just take sneakers? No, it's really everything. Kids, men's, women's, flip-flops, you know, to the sneakers. Sneakers are always most in demand because it's, you know, something that translates across. But um, there's always, you know, someone wanting something different. And that's exciting. We were able to put, you know, heels in prom closets. Um, and so it's just there's a lot of our outreach team work is finding the right place for the product to make sure that it's going somewhere that really um, is most needed. Well, and that's what I'm hearing is the impact. Tony, you said that word, Robin, you said that it's where the impact's going to be most made. And then we see this universality of shoes, right? Yeah. Um, I think we've I've had the opportunity to travel overseas. And that's one of the things you notice, right? You know, off that is either there aren't enough, some are sharing things like that, but we, we all can come around the fact of gosh, how important that is, you know, a lot of walking and, and how that's their transportation. So I, I love the fact that it really brings us together and brings us to that place of true impact, which I know we're going to continue to talk about how that is relating within our organizations. Yeah, absolutely. 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 So as we continue on, I so, so I think we're gonna, yeah, we're going to yeah. talk pretty soon now about, you know, some of the programming that, that takes place at Souls for Souls and, and how that programming supports employee retention and just overall employee morale. Uh, so I, I pulled some data prior to today's conversation just to kind of support why we would even want to talk about this in, you know, in the first place. Uh, so if you don't mind, I'm going to read directly from my notes so that I don't mess up you know, <laughs> any of the information. Um, but just to share a survey of 5,000 full-time workers done by Edge Research in 2023, so pretty recent compared to most research that we see, found that job satisfaction was 25% higher for employees that volunteer through work-sponsored programs. So I, you know, twenty five percent is is not a number to ignore. No. <laughs> when we talk about how difficult it is to find qualified talent, uh, so so this was, you know, I, I thought was really good data to support uh, today's conversation and the great opportunities that exist at Souls for Souls. Uh, the other piece of information that I found was that according to a recent Deloitte report, eighty nine percent of employees believe that companies who sponsor volunteer activities offer a better overall working environment. So if I'm a recruiter, right, if I'm in, in 
HR and, and I'm responsible for recruiting talent, uh, I'm more likely to get folks to want to work in our organization when they see that we offer this type of employee benefit. Uh, so I thought that those were, were both of those were really good examples um, in terms of you know data uh, to support this kind of conversation and again to to kind of underline uh, the the great opportunity that is created at Souls for Souls for this sort of employee you know in, engagement. You know, Tony, I think one of the things my team is specifically responsible for building relationships and partnerships. And um, I talk a lot with different companies and say, I don't want this to be a transaction. I want this to truly be a partnership. So yes, we would love your financial donations or your product donations, but let me tell you about how you can get your team involved. And that's where they really light up and say like, oh, I had no idea that not only could they do a shoe drive where they might have remote staff and everyone everyone can participate in that. There's not a, fine, they don't have to make a financial donation. Um, it's free to ship in with our partnership with Zappos. We also have regional donation centers, one outside of LA, one um, in Nashville where we're based and one in Colorado, mm. in Denver, where people can actually go in and help sort the shoes and load the trucks. And we're a small organization. We rely on the volunteers to do that. And coming together as a team, getting to meet people that they maybe haven't worked with before there's a bonding that's there, but the, the company is also saying, we care about things that you're passionate about. We want to support what you're doing. And we have, um, like, for example, we have a partnership with um, Tapestry. They're one of our donors and um, they do an event with us called For Every Teacher and with our coach teams. And it's through their coach cares program. And I was in Chicago with them. And before we kicked off, they all went around and talked about their purpose. Like what it, and the, the commonality there was people. So whether it was their team, their leadership, the people they were serving that day, they were cheering for these teachers to come in. It was a surprise. They got to shop. And it was like they were lifting them up and making them feel so appreciated. And they kept saying how it was so important that the company makes them feel like it's a place where they belong. And they want that to be what the, the customers experience when they walk through the door. And so mm -hmm. I think when you have a company that then is saying like, let's go volunteer, let's make a difference together. Let's give you the time off. Let's match the hours that you're doing and yes. give you funding. Let's give a grant to the organization that you're doing. Hey, your store can have a pot of money to give to whomever you want. There's so much there from an empowerment perspective, from a, um, we believe in you, we support you. And our company wants to make a difference that it goes beyond just, you know, that transaction of we're making a donation, we're writing a check. Um, and they can do things remotely. They can do things in person. There's just so much um, that we can do together. And when you think about shoes, there's the shoe drive component. And I know we'll talk about the details of that. But there's also events that we do around the country where we're fitting kids mm -hmm. for new these new shoes. And so we need people to come in because it's like the kids are going to the store. We find out their shoe size. They get walked to a fitter who sits with them. We have someone else running to bring different kinds of shoes to make sure they fit their different styles and sizes and brands. And people love that because you can see those kids light up because it might be their first new pair of shoes. It might be like we've had them running around the gym saying like, look how fast I am in my new shoes. Like it's just palpable and people want to continue to do that volunteering and get engaged. And it could be not where their company is located, but they're there remote. And so we, we like to extend that so that we make sure that as many people as possible can engage in the amazing work that we're doing. For sure. Th thank you so much for that, that Robin. I was, I made some notes based on some of what you were saying. I mean, you mentioned yeah. Zappos in particular and, mm -hmm. and what a great partnership that is. And then when we think about some of the businesses and corporations that are involved in terms of employee engagement yeah. with Souls for Souls, uh, and you shared even, you know, some of what those corporate norms or the, what the corporate culture might need to look like in order for that organization to have a successful experience whether it be with Souls for Souls or any organization that they might yeah. want to engage in. Uh, but when you think of, of your experience and those success stories at Souls for Souls with corporations and their engagement, what are some of the, the things within that corporate culture or those corporate mm -hmm. norms uh, for those successful organizations have you seen? That Great others question, Tony. Great yeah, question. It's fantastic. I think helping the 
associates understand the why um, mm -hmm. as well. So like with, I think about our DSW partnership, they collect in all their stores for us what people can drop off. They get their VIP reward points. But we, last year, maybe a year and a half ago, worked with them to embed Souls for Souls in the employee onboarding process. So yeah. they're talking about it from the get-go because we know those associates are the ones who move the needle from the register roundup to encouraging people to donate their shoes. Um, and really, even with we're doing a virtual race um, right now with fundraising, they have a super team and have like people competing and raising money for our For Every Kid program. They're mm -hmm. the ones who are excited because they know why their company believes in this. We're tied to their ESG um, goals and we're really, you know, looking at how can we do this together? What does that look like? Um, and celebrating those employees who are doing amazing work. They get to travel with us and see where the shoes are making a difference in Honduras and Guatemala. It's not just their execs, execs that go. We have their employees based on, you know, their engagement who get to travel too. So it's that full circle where the company yes. is really thinking about, you know, you're putting in the effort and you're going to see the results. Oh, and we need you to be an ambassador because you're so passionate. So mm -hmm. what else can you do in this space? Um, I think that makes a big difference. Explaining the why that you're asking a customer to do something so that they they can really live it every day um, is is great. And we're trying to think through ways to reward and, and thank them because they are the ones that are are moving the needle for us. Right. For Robin, sure. you hit it. You hit that so strong on the why. Right. We started there and it, it's the thread that keeps us connected. Right. That mission, that why. And personal passion of mine is a true partnership. Right. Yes. Souls for Souls is walking out what what they're what they're sharing with their with their corporate part and it, but it is a partnership now you know whether it's dsw or zappos they have something that they're giving back it comes full circle and it's yeah. not this one-way street that yeah. really gets me pumped and it doesn't have to be the big companies we're talking about we have amazing yeah. mom and pop shops we have yeah. you know individuals who want to give we you know as you think about in the faith-based organizations and rotary mm -hmm. clubs and civic or high school students that want to do it as part of a volunteering project or it's good for their resume. Like really anyone can lean in, yeah. especially as you think about the shoe drive piece. Um, right. But it's a great opportunity to drive some foot traffic to the smaller stores and for them to see that we care about sustainability. We don't want to just be selling shoes. We want to help you extend, um, you know, the use of what you have. There's, there's a lot there that really anyone can get involved and we love that part of it mm -hmm. and so cross-generational right yeah you have those who want to be that have the hands on and not that we don't all care about the planet but we understand you know there's that oh gosh i can make a difference this yeah. is something that i can do and that oh gosh it just brings everyone in so inclusive i love that and wendy i love that you you mentioned the cross you know cross-generational because even even the folks being served by Souls for Souls is cross-generational. Oh, yes. absolutely. Yes. You know, Robin, based on what you were saying. So yeah. again, when, when we think about shoe drives, it's so natural to think about, you know, back to school shoe drives and, and, yeah. and the youth that are benefiting and, and the great example that you shared about, look how fast I'm running around the gym, you know, and, and the empowerment that, that is created uh, through a new pair of, of sneakers, but it's, it's multi-generational and, and, yeah. and, and and empowers and improves the self esteem of of people of all ages. It Absolutely. does. It does. Which I think is a great segue because we're talking about how it brings so many together, and there's so much crossover there. So then let's talk about that that whole fact of how are we doing this with people being everywhere, teams yeah. being all over, right? So we're talking about how it brings us together. So speaking to that, Robin, I'm excited to hear how Souls for Souls is really helping that happen. Um, so one of the great things is, and you can do a shoe drive anywhere. I have a box on my front porch that my neighbors like to drop off, um, which is fantastic. But, you know, um, when COVID hit, my team member, Megan, was working with Bank of America, and they have um, a committee that's really focused on sustainability and their team. And they decided, you know, just to encourage individuals to do the shoe drive. And we have a digital donor form so that when someone ships in, they can print off their label from Zappos um, and ship in via UPS for free. And then they can fill out a form saying, like, I donated so many shoes. And what's important, and we really encourage um, our companies to do that, is because we come back to them and do impact reports. You had this person was your highest you know, contributor to shoes or overall as a company. 
you were able to donate X number of shoes. And that really makes a difference where we can not only say like you donated this, but we have an impact calculator on our, a calculator on our website that really kind of breaks down like what that means in terms of our programming or just things that make sense um, in the areas where we're working. And so it's one of those where everybody can participate if you're not just, that's perfect, Wendy. Um, if you're not just in a corporate headquarter, you could be, and it's global too, um, we have an office in uh, the Netherlands. We have a partner facility in the UK. Yeah. Um, we're looking at what that expansion is in Asia and have a partner in Singapore. So there's just a lot when we think about how to engage your workforce, um, whether, it, you know, just be collecting shoes or we do like the virtual race that we're doing right now. Um, it's a movement challenge, right? So how many miles can you do the month of May? Biking, walking, swimming, hiking, whatever that might be, whatever moves you. Um, so we talk to HR company or HR leaders a lot too about like, look, this is a health and wellness as well. Like you can just encourage people to move and maybe they raise money. Maybe it's $20. Maybe it's not anything, but you're supporting and maybe you're matching. Um, so there's just a lot of different things that can um, be done with us other than just shoe drives. But that is a huge piece that, you know, people really like to lean into. Wow, man, it, it the, you see the ripple effect and you just see yeah. how far this can go. So that is extremely exciting. Um, yeah, so as we continue on and, and as you share, where are you finding the most wins? Where mm -hmm. are you seeing the, those, those, those challenges or the, you know, those spaces where we have some gaps, you know, as we're hearing this and we're getting excited to come alongside. Yeah. yeah share and speak into that a little bit. Absolutely. Um, I think the, the retail industry, when, when they have, when there's impacts in the industry, we feel that as well. So as they're figuring out the inventory, mm -hmm. um, tightening that up a little bit more, also looking into like secondhand markets and, you know, reselling as well. So really it's working with them to see, um, the value proposition of of working with us and bringing in that employee engagement piece as a benefit to it and being able to show them the impact of what they're doing. Um, that really has been, you know, wins for us. And then bringing along the sustainability piece, like we're mm. working with Crocs and they've got it where in all their stores, people can drop off their Crocs, whether they're busted, broken, done, which they're going to recycle then, or if they're still wearable, that they come to us and really figuring out you know, how do we continue to do that? And, and where are the areas that we can add additional services that are beneficial for, for companies? You know, you always have to be thinking about what's next, right? Um, so that that's a big, a big piece of it. And I think getting people to see the work we do, I'll just give you one quick example, because it's near and dear mm -hmm. to my heart. And that's my mom. So when I joined Souls for Souls, she's like, I'm going to sign up for a 10,000 drive. Click. This is a 75 at the time, 74 year old woman who decided she was going to collect 10,000 pairs of shoes in a small town in Galesburg, Illinois. And she did and went on a trip to Guatemala and got to meet our partners there and was on Facebook saying like, guys, we can't stop collecting. Like I'm not done. Like we have to keep going. She's since, gosh, that was in February. She's collected another 4,000. She's one of our top fundraisers on my team for the race for every kid she's talked to rotary clubs to ptos works with the team to get presentations because she's not only been like collecting the shoes but then she's seen the impact and talked to yes. the people where it can make a difference and that's where you have someone for life like she's always going to want to support and now it's not because of me right it is truly because of souls for souls if i leave she is still supporting this this organization for the rest of her life so I think those are the big wins we see when people can see it in action and really be able to say, oh, that's the full circle moment. That is the impact that I'm making. Um, they want to do more and they want to you know, do as much as they can. Man, Tony, what does that do for you? Like personally, what hearing that type of, yeah. Well, one, it, it, you are right. It is, it's, I mean, what an example <laughs> of, of someone leaning in and, and really being able to like tap into all that there is to offer at, at Souls for Souls. In terms of, and what I heard in that story was that there are so many opportunities at Souls for Souls that you can tap into that are right for your community. 
Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, you know what? So I think that that's really important that the the accessibility uh, and kind of the onboarding, if you will, the on ramp <laughs> to opportunities at Souls for Souls are such that allows for anyone in any market, um, yeah. in any city, any community uh, to lean in and support the great work. So that's kind of what I heard in that story. Uh, not only like kudos to your mom and <laughs> is she awesome, uh, but it's a great story of how there's just many opportunities for folks to engage and make a difference regardless of kind of where you are. Um, so that's what and I, I think heard. That's, and, and I love that. And that's why I, I, punt, I put that over to you because I, I've heard that through what you've shared already, and even the stats that you brought in. You didn't bring those in as just statistics, right? You were tying those into how it makes a difference in, in real people's lives. We've touched on or we've said all about, you know, bringing in and acquiring new people, how it would be exciting to be a part of an organization. We all know there's that retention piece, right? So yeah. we're just not churning. This is one of those tools, those success tools that an organization of the company can have to say, and this is why you want to stay, because there's a place for you here for the work that we're doing and what we're doing holistically within our community. Just yeah. so exciting. Man, oh man, I, I am, I really am pumped. I want to meet your mom because she sounds <laughs> awesome. So like that, you know, because she's showing her peers, hey, this can be done yeah. anywhere and by anyone. She's visiting. I sent her out though because she likes to pop in on my calls, and I was like, "You can't pop in on this one." Sorry, <laughs> <Mom. this> time, <laughs> <laughs> you would have been a good object lesson. <laughs> well, well, Robin, I'll just look forward to that awesome social tea that that you have at Souls for Souls for kind of a testimonial video yeah. that your mom will be doing. So <laughs> I'll be looking forward to seeing her on that. social and, and her 30 second testimonial for Souls for Souls. <laughs> absolutely, it. absolutely. And, Robin, and wanted, you, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, Wendy, because, you know, as we're talking about Souls for Souls, I wanted to point out to our, you know, our, our folks that are listening through podcast or, or something that if they want to engage and Robin, I'm sorry, you may, you may have been prepared to do this. I wanted to make sure we didn't miss the opportunity, uh, but to learn more, you would want to go to www.soles, the number four, S-O-U-L-S dot org. So again, it's souls for souls, S-O-L-E-S, the number four, S-O-U-L-S dot org. Doing my job Fantastic. for me. Thank you, Tony. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Tony doesn't let me think slip. And I love that. That is fantastic. You know, that's exactly what, what we want is for people to see themselves in all of those places. You know, Robin, as we wrap up here, goodness, how can a half an hour go so fast? Anything that you want to leave us parting with as far as next steps if someone is, they're going to jump online, but is, is there something that's happening and going on in Soul to Souls you want us to know about? Um, you definitely check out, we're wrapping up our um, Race for Every Kid um, this month. We um, unfortunately, unexpectedly lost our CFO who passed away yes, in March that. and the race is in honor of him. So if you feel uh, the need to give back, you can go on our website and it's very obvious right there where you can go. You can also sign up for a shoe drive on the website. We make it really easy, walk you through all the steps um, with emails that come in for you. Or you can reach out directly to me. My email is just Robin W at Souls for Souls, as Tony spelled it out, S-O-L-E-S, the number four, S-O-U-L-S um, dot org. So uh, reach out if you have any questions and we'd love to get you involved and find the best the best way to get you involved that will make you um, excited and passionate. Fantastic. Well, Robin, what an afternoon, like I said such empowerment for each of us to go out and to to get things done and speaking of empowerment tony how are we empowered to do what we're doing every day with nonprofit show we are empowered and fueled by a tremendous group of sponsors uh, that include bloomerang the american nonprofit academy the nonprofit show nonprofit thought leader fundraising academy at national university uh, 180 uh, management group your part-time controller, the nonprofit accounting specialist, staffing boutique, JMT consulting, and nonprofit tech talk. Fantastic. And they do indeed empower us to do what we do. You know, every day we finish and close out the nonprofit show the same way. But as we are reminded, each day it means something a little bit different. And we're going to walk out soul-filled today 
and recognizing that we need to stay well so that we can do well. Thanks so much. We look forward to you on the next episode.